After years of sanctions, restrictions, and doubt, Huawei's new AI chip is performing at a level that no one outside of China saw coming. Close to NVIDIA's gold standard H100, and built without access to the latest Western tech, it's a wake-up call for the entire industry. This isn't just about specs, it's about power, platforms, and who controls the future of AI. Last week, Huawei's new AI chip stunned the tech world with benchmark results that rivaled NVIDIA's industry-leading H100. It wasn't just a win for Huawei, it was a statement. The moment those numbers hit the public, the narrative shifted. This wasn't just about catching up, it was about rewriting the script of who leads the AI hardware race. And now, analysts, investors, and governments are all asking the same question. What does this mean for NVIDIA? In today's video, we'll unpack the consequences of this benchmark bombshell. We'll take a detailed look at how the tech world reacted, what signals NVIDIA may be sending behind the scenes, and why this isn't just a chip war, it's a geopolitical chess match. The stakes go far beyond semiconductors. We're talking about control over future computing infrastructure, AI capabilities, and global influence. From economic implications to strategic alignments, the AI chip race has just entered its most unpredictable phase. And Huawei's bold move has everyone, from Silicon Valley to Shenzhen, scrambling to recalibrate. So, is this a temporary disruption or a permanent realignment of power in the AI world? We're going to dig deep into the story, the stakes, and the strategy. Let's dive in. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. It really helps the channel grow and lets me keep bringing you more content like this. Thanks for your support, and now, let's get back to the video. When Huawei's benchmark numbers hit the news cycle, the response was immediate and polarized. In China, tech publications celebrated the achievement like a national holiday. Headlines proclaimed Huawei's return as a tech phoenix rising from the ashes of US sanctions. Investors responded quickly, with stocks linked to Huawei's chip supply chain seeing noticeable boosts. Even SMIC, China's struggling chip foundry, saw a slight sentiment uplift due to its association with domestic innovation. Meanwhile, in Western media, the tone was much more reserved. Outlets highlighted the lack of independent third-party testing, pointing out that Huawei's benchmark tests were run on its own MindSpore framework and proprietary software stacks, raising questions about objectivity and real-world compatibility. Analysts were divided. Some dismissed the results as exaggerated or narrow in scope. Others, however, acknowledged the significance. Even if the chip isn't quite ready to displace the H100 on a global scale, the fact that it exists at all, under export restrictions, is remarkable. Market reaction followed suit. NVIDIA's stock dipped slightly, while companies aligned with Huawei saw small gains. But the real story wasn't price action, it was positioning. Huawei had just sent a message. We're not just catching up, we're here. It wasn't just about performance parity, it was about optics, confidence, and momentum. And all of a sudden, NVIDIA's dominance, once unquestioned, looked a little less invincible. So the big question now is, what's NVIDIA going to do about it? NVIDIA finds itself navigating a rapidly evolving competitive landscape. At the core of its empire lies its robust ecosystem. Not just hardware, but a fully integrated software and development environment that makes switching platforms inconvenient, if not painful, for most developers. CUDA, QDNN, and TensorRT are deeply entrenched in the global AI community enabling NVIDIA to maintain a grip on the market far beyond what raw chip performance alone would justify. But Huawei's entry into the high-end AI chip race represents more than just a new competitor. It signals the arrival of a state-backed alternative designed not only to challenge NVIDIA's supremacy, but to render it irrelevant in certain regions. That's where NVIDIA's dilemma becomes acute. First, there's the technical race. NVIDIA must remain far enough ahead in performance to justify its premium pricing and developer lock-in. With the upcoming H200 and Blackwell-class chips, NVIDIA is pushing toward higher throughput, better power efficiency, and tighter AI model integration. But Huawei's new chip, reaching up to 95% of H100's performance in FP16 and INT8, has proven that closing the gap is not a fantasy. More concerning for NVIDIA is that Huawei achieved this despite US sanctions. 
without access to TSMC's most advanced nodes, and limited by export restrictions on EDA tools and design software, Huawei still produced a chip that is functionally competitive. If Huawei continues at this pace, and SMIC improves its yield and process nodes, NVIDIA may lose its key differentiator, technological superiority. But performance is only half the battle. The bigger threat lies in ecosystem erosion. If China develops and standardizes its own AI stack, from chips to frameworks like Mindspore, and it gains critical mass among Chinese developers and enterprises, it creates a parallel infrastructure. In such a world, NVIDIA's tools become optional or even obsolete for a significant portion of global AI work. NVIDIA's response must be multidimensional. Expect it to double down on software innovation, adding features, automations, and proprietary integrations that make its stack indispensable. Strategic partnerships with cloud providers like AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure will also deepen, creating a distributed fortress of hardware-software synergy that is hard to replicate. At the same time, NVIDIA has to walk a fine line geopolitically. It must balance U.S. pressure to restrict sales to China with its own business interests in maintaining access to the world's largest data center growth market. This includes lobbying efforts, compliance strategies, and working closely with U.S. regulators to avoid sanctions that would cripple overseas sales. Internally, NVIDIA is also likely reassessing risk. This could mean diversifying its supply chain, investing in domestic fabrication capabilities, or acquiring companies that strengthen its platform control. The road ahead is murky. Huawei has shifted the Overton window of what's possible, and NVIDIA is no longer competing against startups or academic labs. It's competing against a national strategy. The stakes are no longer just market share. They're about technological leadership in an age where compute power increasingly defines geopolitical power. In this context, NVIDIA's next moves are critical. They must not only innovate faster, but smarter, ensuring their moat isn't just wider, but also deeper. Whether they can stay ahead while playing defense on multiple fronts will define the next era of AI infrastructure. To understand the broader implications of this competition, we need to zoom out, way out, and look at the global picture. What we're witnessing isn't just a rivalry between two companies, it's the emergence of two distinct and increasingly incompatible AI ecosystems. The West, led by the United States, has cultivated an open, innovation-driven AI environment. It's characterized by collaboration across companies and countries, access to state-of-the-art cloud infrastructure, and a thriving startup culture. In this world, NVIDIA is king. Its GPUs, software stack, and partnerships dominate everything from small research labs to trillion-dollar tech firms. China, on the other hand, is building something different. After years of being cut off from advanced chips and design tools due to sanctions, China's tech giants, backed by state funding and long-term industrial policy, have decided to go it alone. Huawei's AI chip, paired with software platforms like Mindspore, is a cornerstone of that effort. What's happening now is the start of a global decoupling. Two AI stacks are forming, one powered by NVIDIA, running on TSMC Silicon with TensorFlow, PyTorch, and Western cloud providers. Another built by China centered around Huawei and SMIC, using local silicon and homegrown framework. This isn't just technological bifurcation, it's political and economic too. Countries are being forced to choose sides, not always by preference, but by necessity. U.S. allies must navigate export controls and political pressures. Meanwhile, nations outside the Western sphere including many in Asia, Africa, and South America, are increasingly exploring Chinese tech as an alternative. For companies, this split raises operational challenges. AI startups must consider where to deploy, what stack to build on, and how to access talent pools that may be segmented by geopolitical lines. Large enterprises are rethinking data localization, cloud contracts, and even hiring strategies. Even education is affected. Universities in China are increasingly teaching AI development based on local tools and chipsets, while Western institutions continue to rely on NVIDIA-based infrastructure. That divergence in skill sets may further entrench the divide, creating parallel career paths and ecosystems. And then there's security. As AI becomes more critical to military, finance, healthcare, and national governance, governments are tightening controls. Cross-border collaboration becomes more complicated. 
and trust in foreign AI begins to erode. In many ways, this isn't just an AI cold war. It's a race to shape the digital infrastructure of the next 50 years. The side that controls compute and the developer base essentially defines the direction of the world's most powerful technology. So when Huawei drops a benchmark that rivals the H100, it's not just a performance milestone, it's a signal flare. A declaration that the game board is shifting and everyone must now rethink their position. The implications of this divide aren't theoretical, they're already happening. And they're going to accelerate. As we reach the conclusion of this in-depth look into the Huawei vs NVIDIA showdown, it's important to step back and reflect on the larger narrative. What we are witnessing isn't just a story about processors or compute power, it's the manifestation of a global transition. One in which technology, policy, economics, and ideology are fusing into a single, high-stakes game for control over the future. Huawei's benchmark was more than just a technical achievement, it was a signal. A disruption in what many believed was a stable, even untouchable hierarchy of AI hardware. NVIDIA has long reigned supreme, and deservedly so, with a decade of dominance in GPUs and the full-stack software environment to match. But that reign is now being challenged not by a small scrappy startup, but by a national champion with long-term strategic intent and serious state backing. The AI landscape is no longer just about innovation, it's about resilience. Countries, companies, and developers are all thinking more seriously about where their tech comes from, who controls it, and whether they can rely on it in a world increasingly shaped by geopolitical tension. This leads us to an undeniable truth. The AI chip race is going to define more than just technological trajectories. It will define economic alliances, shape educational paths, and even influence how nations prepare for future conflict, not necessarily with weapons, but with data, compute, and control over AI infrastructure. In the months ahead, expect more headlines, expect more benchmarks, more strategic partnerships, more regulatory flare-ups. But beyond the surface, pay close attention to who's building ecosystems, who's educating developers, who's providing real alternatives, not just specs on a slide, but full platforms that solve problems and enable growth. The final winner of this AI race may not be the one with the fastest chip. It may be the one who earns the trust of developers, supports them with tools, and builds a platform that becomes indispensable to the industries of tomorrow. So as Huawei ramps up production and as NVIDIA sharpens its next move, the rest of us, developers, investors, educators, and consumers, are watching a new tech world being born in real time. Stay alert. Stay informed. And subscribe if you want to keep up with the most important transformation of this decade. Because this war isn't just about silicon, it's about the future.